to the Nerdiverse. Go ahead, sit and listen to the masters, the old heads, talk about what you love the most. Video games, comics, movies, and everything you need to maintain your We got the knowledge that's straight out the ether. Gonna need a drink and have to take a seat to expand your mind and listen to the speaker. Mike and the squad's gonna give you what you need. Please uh, send in a question, come and get some answers, learn a couple less. From the masters with the special guests, we got the green lanterns glowing on our chest. Yes, please sit back and relax, cause we're gonna hit you with them stole cold facts. And allow me to be the very first to welcome you to the Masters of the Nerdiverse. Welcome to the Masters of the Nerdiverse podcast, where we always have such sites to show you. This eco-terrorist of a podcast can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and Spotify. I am, of course, your host, Mike G. And with me, as always, is, of course, our also host, uh, the Virgil to my Dante, um, Jackpot, Winter Trash Monk, the Thizzer. Can I be a Geppetto to your uh, Pikachu, uh, Pinocchio? That means you're my dad, and that's weird. Oh, what was the Cricket's name? Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket? Yeah. He was otherworldly. Was yeah. he not like a spirit or supposed to be an angel or something? <laughs> I don't know. He's suspicious running around with that boy. With that boy? This, this yeah. grown ass, this grown as a uh, grasshopper. Yeah. Hey. Do you remember uh, a movie that they made where Drew Carey was Geppetto? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, and Usher was uh, Treasure Island, the, the leader of Treasure Island. I'm, you're making me think of those weird ABC. Treasure Island, Treasure Island. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it does not go into that. <laughs> Remember those those ABC like musical uh, Disney shows where it was like Brandy was Cinderella and Whitney Houston was like the fairy godmother. Yeah, okay. This it's like <laughs> that generation. <laughs> well, this is ABC. Well, there it's you go. called Geppetto. Yeah, and it's from 2000. I called it. Drew Carey played Geppetto. Yep. Uh, Brute, uh, Brent Spiner played Magna Fuco. Okay. Do you know who Brent Spiner is? Yeah, that's Data from uh, yeah. Star Trek The Next Generation. And then <laughs> Usher, they don't have a cast name for him. He's just Usher. He just uh, Julia Lewis Dreyfus plays the fairy with turquoise hair. Uh, Elaine? And then Wayne Brady is it as the magician. Uh, Anton Yelchin is in this? Anton Yelchin? No. I already said what? Wayne Brady. Yeah, you said <laughs> Wayne Brady. He's going to have to choke a bitch. Drew Carey sings a song? Drew Carey can sing? So many questions, man. Carey's role in the film became a recurring butt of jokes on his series, Whose Line Is It Anyways? Good. That's what he gets <laughs> he to, deserves it. That's what he good for sell, selling out to the mouse. Like half the Earth did today. Oh, he no, it's not treasure. It's Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. Pre- pleasure that's, Island. That sounds like something that would come on come on Cinemax like at eleven o'clock at night. Hey, <laughs> after, <laughs> after return of of uh, after Pennywise, TV. after the return of Pennywise in season three, we have a new episode of Pleasure Island Ringmaster yeah, Edition. That what? come on right. That come on right after Red Shoe Diaries. <laughs> Uh, my, are you are you young enough to remember? No, <laughs> no. I'm also not dirty like what you. What the hell, man? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm the dirty. Hell, I'm... Way. <laughs> you are the trash monk, the third man. Yeah. How's your week know... doing? Oh man, my week. My week has been really nutty, man. It's been really. But did nutty. I even say this is trash monk? No. Trash monk? Aye, aye, aye. Uh, okay, how's your week? Uh, my week was good. I I I. I am Johnny Five. I am alive. Okay, uh, in, folks. You know that uh, Leah Thompson had sex with that robot, right? <laughs> you, you know it's short circuit, right? More than a woman. <laughs> More than a woman to be. Yeah, that went down, dog. You can't tell me it didn't. Okay. She was making that robot breakfast. <laughs> 
The robot was just like, what? <laughs> this is awkward. <laughs> you got to watch Short Circuit with Johnny Five. Do it. She opens up the door and <laughs> there's like a toaster in the bed. Yeah, the, it's not what it looks that's like. That's what it looks like. And then it just pops up to burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. This is why Hollywood doesn't accept us yet. Not yet. We're, We're the next on it. Dennis Hopper. Yeah, man. We're like we're like Gary Sinise. Like, a week, man. We this have week, a band. We do have a band. It's called Dog Star. Oh wait. That's taken. Uh what did I do this week? I played video games and I watched stuff, man. But before I talk about the game I played, I want to talk a game about a game I didn't play. And that's Death Stranding, man. Have you seen anything from this game? Have you paid attention to what's going on with it? I want to talk I've about seen Death a little Stranding. Bit. I've watched hours of this game. Okay. I've watched hours of it. I liked how my I was talking to somebody else about this, and it's like it looks good. The gameplay, we don't know yet. <laughs> That's the thing, man. Like I, I can't say that I've touched the game. I can't say I purchased it or I even played it. But it looks like the most expensive niche game I've ever seen in my life. Like it's not going to be for everyone. It, it gives me like that fallout vibe where it's like a lot of people think fallout's boring because half the game is traversal and you're just walking around like running into people having adventures death stranding has less than that you run into no one doug you're just running around and it's a run simulator with some Mm -hmm. action and and weird kojima wackiness dude right um i mean it is going to be unique but I think people are going to be expecting more from a game when they have no clue what this game is. That's, and yeah, yeah. Again, it's like we've talked about it before. Of this is Kojima outside of the cage now, folks. Yep, uncaged. Yes, he is unleashed upon the world, and this is what he wanted. It's exactly what he wanted. Mm-hmm. He's super happy with the way it turned out, and right? He, and, and I he, and yeah, yeah. I'm back to going to say, to saying that this would this is. A great way to like, uh, like he wants to make movies. Yep. With this, yep. and I think that'd be fantastic. He's got the movie mind. But do you? Do we need? But we. I just need to see what the gameplay is like before I say anything. Actually, the gameplay is you running around as as Norman Reedus, and you have run tech, so you have to balance yourself because you're carrying all these packages, and you're running through terrains and water and ghosts and. It's just you traversing very far distances with packages. It's 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 fetch it's fetch quest the game, pretty much, and you got to be okay with that. How dare you? It is. It is. I'm not saying that as a negative. You just got to be okay knowing that's what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. You know, it's gonna have that Kojima wackiness, like you said, the storytelling, the what does it all mean? But the in and outs, the hours that you're gonna lose in this game. It's all just you going from A to B and then from B to C and C to D and then D back to A. So you just got to be prepared, mentally prepared to do that, <laughs> you know, and be okay with it and have and make it fun for yourself. You know, not everybody's going to be into it. People have Make it fun for now. everybody. Make it fun for everybody. Now, I do want to talk about a game that I, I have been playing, which is The Outer Worlds. Ooh. Uh, I beat it. And Thoughts? And I'll put it like this, and I kind of alluded to it on my on our Twitter, which is at MNerdiverse, is I beat the game. I want to say I put like 25, 30 hours into it. You know what I mean? I didn't do everything. I could have done everything, but I didn't. I beat the game. Very good ending. Uh, the one thing I will take away from it is that it has this weird kind of boss ending, like a boss battle at the end, which is the game does not, you know, these types of games don't have boss battles. You know what I mean? But it has this weird forced boss battle, which was kind of awkward. But I beat the game. I thought about the ending for like 10, 15 minutes. And I just restarted a new save. <laughs> and just started playing it again from the top. <laughs> you wow. Know, new character. Uh, and I haven't done that in so long. A game hasn't made me feel like to do that. You know, like, okay, I'm going to be a uh, female this time. And I'm going to use melee except for heavy weapons. And I'm going to be the bad guy route this time. And you're just excited to run it again. You know what I mean? Because the options you're given and the choices you're given are so miraculously vast 
that even in like 30 minutes of playing the way something went went a completely different way because i chose to do it a completely different way and it's and it's like completely different content within the situation it's like playing knights of the old republic again man it's like this is a game i'm probably going to beat 15 20 times just to try to get everything it's amazing man i can't there's certain you know it's not right a perfect on, game man. i just had a really good time with it and i haven't had a that game is it's just my pace, man. It's just so Mike G approved, uh, you know, so more power to that. And something I set up today and I haven't had a chance to watch, but I do want to talk about it, is that Disney Plus is going to be a problem, man. <laughs> <laughs> Disney Plus is going to be a problem socially for me. You explain now. <laughs> Disney, so Disney Plus launched today as the day of are recording. And firstly, it just broke the internet. It, it was broken. Um, the, the people weren't able to use it because so many people were trying to log in, and you know the servers probably got destroyed, and they had to fix that. But once you get in Disney, I I wanted to test how real it was. You know what I mean? Like, okay, this is your first day. I'm gonna pull up some obscure thing. I want to see if it pops up, right? So I was like, okay, I want to I want to watch the the Iron Man cartoon from the '90s. The Iron Man. I was like, there's no way they're gonna have that. They have it. It's a what? full season. They have the Fantastic Four '90s cartoon with. Uh, let's call the four. Do they have the, the X Men cartoon? They have the X Men animated series, dude. <laughs> uh, the gutter trash. I, th- I, th- yeah, you egg sucking gutter trash. <laughs> That's Wolverine. <done. laughs> yeah, they got the Wolverine and the X Men. They got e- X Men Evolution. They got all the Spider Mans. Any Spider-Man. I think they even have the weird MTV CGI Spider-Man. And it's like really specific. And I was like, okay, here, I'm going to test it again. Star Wars. And then I see A New Hope. I see Empire Strikes Back. And I'm like... Don't tell me they have the Ewoks Christmas special. I don't know. I still need to test that. (laughs) They probably do. And I was like, the OG... The New Hope trilogy is something that just doesn't come on TV all the time, right? right? You can't watch it on cable. You can't stream it anywhere. It's here now. And lastly, I was like, okay, let me test Disney. And I just went to Disney. And the first thing that pops up is Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. And I'm like, these are movies you can't just watch commercial free. <laughs> you, know I mean? you just can't. Like, it's kind of nutty. Like, And then you looked up Songs of the South and they had that too. Yeah, and I felt right at home. I was singing. I was singing along because I know all the lyrics. Um, wow! It, I don't. I like this new strategy of Mike. <laughs> I'm just gonna lean right into your into your nonsense. Just okay. Eat it, just just you know, Kobayashi hot dog. No, that, that really put that made me like sit dog. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, I gave you that Inuyasha. Sit boy. Uh, he's. <laughs> do they have Inuyasha? <laughs> yes, they do have Inuyasha. No, they don't. That's that's Funimation would eat them alive. Oh. But it's going to be problematic. I have some friends that have been quiet all day. Usually they're online all day talking, tw- twittering it up. And I'm like, where have you been? And they just sent me a screenshot of their TV and they're like watching the Aristocats or something. They're like, oh, they're like Mike, help. SOS. I've been stuck. On- I started with the Mandalorian. And I couldn't. I haven't stopped. <laughs> I'm like, yo, it's kind of nutty, man. So I haven't. I've just booted it up. I want to make sure it ran Captain Marvel, all that. But I haven't watched anything on it, and I'm just like, this could be a problem because I want to watch Aladdin, I want to watch Little Mermaid, I want to watch, you know, Hercules, dude. Like it's got to be on there. And even the animated series of Hercules, Tailspin is on here. I think uh, um, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, dude. Like these, they just don't come on anymore, dude. You know, yeah. so it's super. I'm super hyped about about it. But uh, and other than that. Uh, just working on my D and D character, uh, uh, getting my D and D character ironed out, and just having a lot of fun writing my background for my D and D character, <laughs> which I didn't do our my first D and D game because I just wasn't too comfortable with it, you know. But now I'm writing backgrounds and character designs and allegiances, and it's just, I'm getting really into it, so I'm having fun with that and doing and did my character design. I posted on our Twitter Adam Nerdiverse. Okay. Of, of my um of my tiefling warlock set in the nineteen tens during World War Two after World War One, you know, so it's, it it's makes me it's helping me be creative, so I'm having a blast with it. So that's pretty much my week, you know. 
Right on, man. Yeah, man. How's your week so far, dude? It's been pretty chillax, as they say. Chillax. Uh, I was in a car wreck on Friday. <laughs> hey. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. You're okay, though, right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm. Hey, if I wasn't fine, I certainly wouldn't be doing this trash. No, nah, you do it. Rain, sleet, or snow. I believe in you. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else happened? Uh, uh, I oh, we had a, a get a little get together at the house at the, the trash bunker that, that ha- holds the trash bunker. Yeah, and you know, I got to socialize with people and you know show my social side wearing a Hawaiian shirt under nice. a uh, cardigan to show that I am a. Uh, both a fun guy, but reserved. You're a, you're a living mullet, Doug. You're yeah. A, I'm like Ernest Hemingway and John Belushi in one. Nice. I, yeah. I, I feel it. I feel um, it. And fish fillet and uh, fish fillet. A fish fillet. And you know that that was it. Uh, watch um, watch football. You know, Fort Go Niners. Uh, <laughs> and you know, there's a hockey game tonight. <laughs> I don't want to hear any ghost sharks randomly in the middle of this podcast. You hear me? Hey, go sharks! Go sharks! Go sharks! Yeah, this this master of the nerd is brought to you by the NHL All Property Rights Reserved. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> any exi- can you imagine if we got hockey jersey to just set our our AM our MLTM names on the back? How sick that Man, would be! If that ever happened, I would literally like lose control of my bowels maybe, just say man. That. maybe man the right person listens to us and next thing you know we're sponsored by the nhl and all rights reserved <laughs> like i like you the know? cut of his gym i like the i like the bass in their voices yeah. young men would you like to be a subsidiary of the nhl we don't really talk about hockey sir we could you only got to talk about hockey games <laughs> All right, so you just killed the channel, but we get free jerseys? Bet. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) Do it. (laughs) By far, we would be more successful than, like, hundreds of other podcasts if we did that. You know, but our souls would be eaten by the NHL and all of its uh, branding rights. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Yeah, we we could be, like, a nerd-based sports show. That reminds me of that that, uh, news article you brought up, like, months ago, where you're talking about... That podcast that got sponsored by McDonald's and just lost their damn minds. Oh yeah, that's all taken care of now. They're back. They're sponsored again. Oh great! Yeah, Hopefully they, they learned their lesson. You know? No, they didn't. But <laughs> they turned it back on McDonald's as going. Well, you took us off the air because we showed a video of a guy practicing or like showing his fetish. So now you're uh, you're shaming him for his fetish. Stop and then McDonald goes, oh, no, and <laughs> gives them their money back. And they're now no longer banned in all McDonald's. And one of them is now a brand ambassador for McDonald's. Wow. Talk about See, this. It works if you're schemy, folks. If you know how to wiggle through the system, you can get anything you want. Yeah. Interesting. Speaking of getting things we want, you want to do a poll of the week, my man? Let's go to the polls of the week. Candyman, Candyman. Candy was it only me that I thought that part of Willy Wonka was weird? Yeah. Where he sung the Candyman can to yeah. the kids in the chocolate fact in the chocolate store. Yeah. Get online, take a poll or two, and vote for, for you. you. The emoji in polls. <laughs> we really got to get a we got to get a Ghost Rider, man. So we can have this stuff prefabricated yeah. before we do the episode. The Ghost Rider featuring Ethan Hunt. Ha- uh, no, uh, e- uh, Ethan Hunt from like Mission no. Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> featuring Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. And uh, the guy and, who played Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> and Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. And uh, Jessica Tandy, Doug. Is she still around? Jessica, I don't think Jessica Tandy was in Dang that. it. What's her, uh, what's her European Rider, equivalent? E- Ewan McGregor. Pierce Brosnan, directed by Roman Polanski. Okay, oh, gee, oof, oof. It's a real movie. It's a good oof. one. Is uh, oof. Oh, uh, and John Jim Belushi is in it. <laughs> what? We're moving on. This sounds okay. farcical. I don't believe any of this. You better watch. It's a good, good little thriller. Is it a thriller? 
Yeah. Watch the Tenant. Oh, and the guy from the uh, from the well, the good the movie Good, the Bad, the Ugly. He played the ugly. He's in it as well. <laughs> oh, okay, I like I like the. I'm uh, not crazy, Mike. I'm not crazy. <laughs> it's a real movie. Look it up, Stoops. Okay, I'll look it up. Uh, speaking of things to look up, you should look up that it was Veterans Day recently. Yes. Support your local veteran. Buy Did them you a buy soda. a poppy? I bought a soda that had a flag on it. That works. <laughs> yeah, that was my equivalent. I don't have any uh, closely related veterans in my family. Did you hear about the drama of uh, an old hockey coach getting fired from his job? No, nah, man. Enlighten because he, me. So uh, there's a... I can't. Don Cherry, I believe, is his name. Don and Cherry, he, and he has a show called Coach's Corner on Sportsnet. Yep. And he decided to do something where he's like, um, "These veterans fought for your freedom. You people come to our cities and not wear poppies. You enjoy, oh sure, you enjoy the milk and honey of our town, uh-huh. but you dare not. Ex- <laughs> but milk. you do not respect our. But you would never be caught dead wearing a poppy." So the the thing people are focusing on are the terms like what do you mean you people? <laughs> and so First then he got all, fired, and he's like, "I'm not backing down." So, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah. So let's say you're an immigrant, you're you're coming to these shores of America looking for a yeah, life. He's Canadian, by the way. Canadian. Yeah. Can you imagine if the moment you walk into the country, they're like, "Wear this hat, wear this, wear this shirt. <laughs> you're American now." Yeah. Is that fascism? <laughs> You Man. have to wear this now. It's true. Represent like your patriotism. When you go to like Iran, where you got to wear the burqa. Well, I mean that's a cultural thing, man. It's oh, you yeah. don't have to. I mean, you, you do, right? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm aborting from this conversation because I'm <laughs> I'm amazingly ignorant at at uh, international customs. So I'm Mike here. G tries to break up the nerd. Of- <laughs> no, I'm just trying to dodge this. This uh, international bullet, Doug. Yeah, I don't know why I brought it up on air. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. So, <laughs> you just jump out a window. Uh, so, we asked the Neurodiverse, who's your favorite fictional veteran? And the options I provided were Forrest Gump, Captain America, <laughs> Big Boss from Metal Gear Solid, yeah. and Hero Yuri. Hero Hero Yuri from, um, gu- from Mobile Suit Gundam Wing. Now, I don't know what I'm talking about, but could we also put, like, John Kerry as a fictional veteran? <laughs> <laughs> Can you prove to me that John Kerry actually existed? <laughs> Can you show me a picture of him where he's not digitally added? Doug? I don't think so. He's not real. You know, it's like you can't prove to me that uh, Paris Hilton is real, Doug. Oh, I, there, well, you've been looking at the videotape, so you know if no, she's man. real or not. That's Industrial Lights and Magic, Doug. <laughs> it's not real. George Lucas made it. Uh, so the way the, po- the poll shook down is my anime picks never get love, and it's kind of curious. I just I add them just to be just for the yuck, <laughs> just to be Mike, <laughs> just to be mean and weird, just to see yes. people vote for it. And that's kind of like what I do with all the polls is I'll add a dark horse that I know no one's going to vote for. I'm just curious. You know, like who, what percentage of people even know what I'm talking about? So, Hiro Yui, who was the main, who was the pilot of Mobile Suit Gundam, as well as the pilot of Mobile Suit Epion. Okay. Epion's the realest. Um, he got 4%. Nobody's messing with him. Uh, Big Boss uh, from Metal Gear. Uh, Muff. He got uh, 20%. Forrest Gump. Got thirty six percent. Thought he would get more votes. I may not be smart, but I know what, know what love, love is. Aerials. You ever been to Bubba Gump um, Shrimp Company? No. Where it's a restaurant based solely off of of Forrest Gump. And don't they pay like Forrest Gump twenty four seven there? It's really dumb. Yeah, and okay. everybody goes run, Forrest, run, and it's really. Or maybe we'll see Gary Sinise. You might. He's maybe being the the band that plays tonight. <laughs> I was going to put Lieutenant Dan on this list and not uh, Forrest Gump, but yeah. <laughs> that would have been even more obscure. And Captain America got 40% of the votes because we're all Marvel shills at this point. And I love Captain America, but the truth of the matter is, Marvel? Question mark? You know what bothers me is that t- like 20 years ago, nobody cared who Captain America was. <clears throat> no one. No one. No one. No one. 
No they just one. cared about Spoder Man and the X Men. Spoder Man. Yeah. Now what they need to do is get like an Alan Moore type character to do like a Captain America series where it's like Captain America in a Donald Trump era. (laughs) Oh, that was that weird uh, Frank Miller Batman series called. It was called like Fascist War or something like that. No way. No, it's called Holy War. It's called Batman Holy War. And it's like the most disturbing Frank Miller is going crazy storyline ever. (laughs) You got to look it up. It's out of control. I think that's the name of it. It's called like Batman Holy War. I've never read it because I value my sanity, but <laughs> yikes. Um, yeah, a costume vigilante named the Fixer the battles Islamic terrorists after an attack uh, on Empire City. Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. He had something to say. It also reminds me of like the dog welder, that super villain that welds dogs together and throws them at superheroes. Yeah. That's a real, someone who, that's a real co- character. That's in the Marvel database. Oh, they're the Batman Holy Terror. Yeah, that's what it's called. There you go. But Thank it's you. written by Alan Brennert. Oh, okay. What was the one written by Frank Miller? There's one written by Frank it, Miller. That's the one, Holy Terror. Oh, yeah. That was the, the novel was really proposed as Holy Terror. Holy Terror, Batman! Holy Terror, Batman. And, but it's no longer a project associated with the Batman character or DC Comics. Miller explained in 2010, it's no longer a DC book. I decided, I decided partway through it that it was not a Batman story. Well, yeah, you know, when you hijack a character to tell your own agenda, um, anyway, I'm I'm getting way into my own personal life right now. (laughs) Michael, what does the G stand for? Uh, Are you ready to do some news? (laughs) Let's go to to the the news. news. Start spreading the news. New York, New New York. Yep, yep, (laughs) yep. Goulet. Uh, let's do some video game news, Doug. So Fortnite Pro Faze Jarvis is banned permanently from using Aimbot, Doug. Too harsh? <laughs> Question mark. Nope. Nope. Get him out of here, nope. Doug. <laughs> Get there him are out. plenty of other players that could play. Did you hear like Ninja defending him? Ninja was like, "Man, it's kind of not fair because he's a content creator, and you're taking the food out of his mouth." I'm like, <laughs> that's what they get. <laughs> I'm like, I was just like, effort. Like, the reason people watch your streams because one, you're charismatic and you're actually good at the game. Right. You can't cheat, dude. Like, right. no, nobody wants to see that. Like, esports is still, unless folks might disagree with this, it's still in its early infancy stage. So, what you need to do is when you catch people, um, like uh, pros who are um, cheating, they need to be dealt with swiftly. Swiftly and yeah. mercilessly. Now, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be like an appeals court or something like that. Like there yeah. should be like an appeal process, but, but it needs to be done. Like you need to do this by the books because already people are suspect of professional games gamers. Yep. Okay, it's so just, you need to put a level of clash into. It's it. a lot of money being waved around with these people. You know, it's a lot of money. In esports, in professional gaming, right. in Twitch, and there needs to be some validity to it, you know. Right. You know, like if this guy is cheating, get him out of here, man. He knew what he was doing. He installed Aimbot. Yeah, that's not some premeditated thing. I mean, it's I not some. If, yeah, I don't know if you can mirror like point to point how physical sports deal with cheating. Like if people are caught with peds or on peds or stuff like that, performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> And uh, but, I don't know if you can do a one for one comparison on that. Nah, man, you can't. I think, yeah, the too... aimbot is specifically. Yeah, you downloaded that sh- that stuff, yeah. man. Like, or it, want... it affects it affects the game. Aimbots perhaps f- affect the game a lot more than one than player dosing. Yeah, and it's one thing to be like, oh man, I took these vitamins that my personal that you know my personal trainer put me on. I didn't know that they broke code. You yeah. know, versus. Man, how do you install Aimbot again? <laughs> right. My really trainer installed Aimbot on my computer. I don't tell know. Me. Well, yeah. I just got so much better, and I didn't yes. even have to really aim or Why anything. Why are there any Aimbot in your studio? That's enough questions. <laughs> right? So, no. Get them out of here, man. Yeah. Yeah. Have no remorse for people who are actively cheating. Yeah. Now, there could be an argument to be made that uh, was he caught cheating during a tournament, or was it like him streaming? 
it sounds like it was him streaming, but I need to look okay. for it. Because there know. could be like an argument made going, okay, it's he's not cheating in a competition. He's just cheating in the game itself. But I would still err on the side of caution and go like, uh, you need you need to not do that, my dude. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just like, you're making money off this, man. Like, right. people are charging. I mean, people are paying you yes. for your aptitude at a particular talent, which is playing Fortnite. And when you cheat, you're not, like you said, it's not, you're, it's just not affecting you. You're affecting yeah. any character within, like, a radius of you. You know what I mean? Like, it's even, and it's even more for mm. Battle Royales where. It's the ripple effect. It's the ripple. It's a ripple, just like in JoJo. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> forget this guy. Get him out of here. There's plenty of fish in the sea. It just opens up another person who's not cheating doing it honestly. Yes. Uh, now I like this. I like this next article. Ooh. Speaking of things not to like, uh, China bans kids from video games <laughs> after 10 p.m. since daily time limit. Limit. How fun is it to live in China right now, guys? <laughs> well, it's. How awesome is it right now? So here's so we let's let's think about this a little bit, folks. Okay. Um, banning kids from video games after 10 p.m. Um, set setting daily limits, yada yada yada. Do do we have an issue with kids playing too many video games in the United States? It's been too many an addiction. Correct. Now, do I think that China, like, we should have like a uh, an overlord going, no more video games for you, <laughs> and then yeah. like, slap your hands? Yeah. No, but it it is them trying to take care of a problem the way China only knows how, which is With, through brute government force. Through brute <laughs> government initial force. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But but there is but there is a problem that they are trying to address that. Uh, as of right now, the United States do not have an answer for. You know what it is? We yeah. do have an answer for it. You know what the answer is? Parental Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go. Parental Guardians. Thank you for saying this. All right, hold this. Your Honor, can we play back the tape to three months ago? Okay. okay. <laughs> when we were talking about uh, loot boxes. <laughs> yeah. Hundred uh, percent. What? Okay. So okay. I know where you're going with this, and the difference is that parents are still up. Parents are still responsible for loot boxes. Okay. Hundred okay. percent. Okay, if your kid has access to your credit card and you're none the wiser, and they're charging up a storm, that's yeah. not the kid's fault. That's your fault. You should have better safeguards against uh, your kid. What your kid's input. As well as when I was a kid, when it was time to go to bed, my mom just unplugged the, unplugged the game. It was time you're going. It's time, it's night night. You're going yeah. to sleep. You know, all right, all right. The, the government didn't need to the come in and kick down the door yeah. and be like, "Playtime is over." Yeah. <laughs> you know, playtime is over. <laughs> and just you just shoot your TV screen. You know, parents just need to parent up and just yep. tell your kids to parent up. Parent up. It's that time to go to bed. Have like you done Frankie your homework? Frankie says, "Relax." Yeah. MOTN says parent up. Parent up. Did you do your homework? Yes. You brush your teeth. You got an hour of video game play during the week. Go to sleep. You don't need a government sanctioned order for that to happen. And if there is no unit in there, then it's tough. Yeah. Yeah. Some kind All of right. guardian, some kind of authority figure, you know? So, no. The Guardians of Gahul. The Guardians of Gahul. Uh,. Street Fighter V producer reveals why Capcom turned down a collaboration with Mortal Kombat. I really want to talk about this. Pass. You can you can you can put your passes in a glass, <laughs> Mister. <gasps> Mortal Kombat versus Street Fighter is the it's the dumbest idea ever, but it's also what everybody's ever wanted ever. It's just one of those things, man, and. It didn't make sense then. It, it still doesn't make sense now. It's just... It can never be, guys. I hate to be that guy. But Mortal Kombat plays so drastically different than Street Fighter. That it just... It would... To try to make both fit in the same box would lessen 
the two, you know, and I hate to say, cause it's a cool idea. You want to see Scorpion fight Ryu or whatever, Ryu, mm-hmm. but the games play so drastically different. It's not like Tekken and Street Fighter where there are some kind of gray areas or, or Street Fighter and SNK, KOF or Mortal Kombat and Injustice that's made by the same company. It's just like trying to, it's like NFL versus the NBA. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) Okay. But is that even the same game? No, it's, it's, it's silly. It's different. So I definitely just wanted to put my two cents on that little conversation. Um, Square Enix is working on a next generation game. (laughs) You just stop. Yeah. Yeah, nothing else to say. I, I know you're not going to want to talk about it. You already said pass. Man after my own heart. <laughs> Man, see, I don't know how to talk. I'm pretty sure this Square Enix game is just going to be on um, the second part to Final Fantasy VII because oh. they're, they're breaking that game up. Or it could be something completely different. I don't know. The PS5 is still such a vaporware right now. But, you know. <laughs> I know it's a thing, and there's probably people playing it right now and testing it, but it's still vaporware until we actually get to see the console, so it's hard to get excited for it, you know? I don't know. How do you feel about Next Gen? Man, it's hard. The game consoles, like, I, this is going to be, like, an ongoing battle between the PCs and the game consoles, <laughs> but it, it's like what... I remember being in high school, and and taking a computer repair class. And it was like around this time that windows seven was coming out. And the teacher was like, was saying like windows is trying to go the route of looking like Mac OS oh. and a Mac OS is trying to look like a windows or trying to do what windows can do. Yep. I think there's something happening now to where like people are like plugging in their PCs to play like emulators or like, uh, count console games mm-hmm. what were traditionally console games and then people are expecting like the power of a computer in their gaming console or like a steady power sort of thing of like they know that this is the frame rate i'm going to get this is the this is what's going to be the leveling field right type. uh so i i see like there's kind of a, a parallel between that of like um they're trying to be their opponent but um. Yeah, we yeah. just have to wait for what the next generation looks like. It's going to be more and more indistinguishable between yeah. what a PC and what a gaming console looks I like. I totally agree with that. Yeah. yeah. To the uh, point where it's going to be, do you want PC console or do you want VR machine? <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. The lines are blurring. You know, PS5 right. is supposed to have a solid state hard drive. Right. You know what I mean? PS5 is supposed to have this graphics card that is currently in high tech PCs now to the point where it's not PC trying to be like consoles it's consoles trying to be like PCs where they're getting people comfortable with the idea of updating their their hard drives you know what I mean updating yeah. their RAM space in in their consoles you know <laughs> it's just something that's usually you never have to worry about you know you just plug and play uh, so I think they're kind of grooming the masses to get more comfortable with you know, flipping up the hood of your PS4, of your Xbox Scarlet, whatever it's going to be, and tinkering with the set, the settings, the systems, the 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 memory, the, the the power behind it. So I can totally see the PS5 being like, yeah, if you don't like what's in it, just swap it out. <laughs> you know, I can totally see <laughs> them going in that route if you want to do that. If, like, there's going to be two different kinds of PS5s: so the ones that are brain dead and just plug and play. And uh-huh. for the person who just wants it to be as beefy as possible, you can be able to flip up the hood. You don't like that solid state hard drive? You don't like that terabyte? Put in a seven, a ten terabyte, whatever you want to do. You know, I think we're leaning more towards that. And until we know exactly what we're dealing with, it's hard to get excited for for upcoming video games. We're not going to know until early next year or so. Right, right. You know what I mean? Let's talk about some movies, bro. Let's go to the movies. Let's go to the movies. So Kevin Feige is, is talking about, you know, the future of the MCU and how excited we are for that. Right. And he's saying that with the Disney Plus TV shows that are coming out, such as Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, She-Hulk, that these 
TV series characters actually have a chance to be adapted to the big screen as well at some point. And I just think that's fascinating because that's a bit of big kind of 600 pound elephant in the room when it comes to Marvel's television exploits versus their film exploits, you know? Okay. Okay. And, you know, we, we never expected Daredevil to show up in infinity war and that kind of bums people out, you know, it's like, you know, not don't expect to see Jessica Jones and Captain Marvel, right? There's always been that hard line, you know? And now they're talking about blurring that line because I guess they right. just have more uh, control over the content. You know, they're not beholden to ABC or Netflix or or, uh, or anything like that. It's all right. in-house. Like, you know? I would not be surprised if in the future we see, you know what? We're... We have this whole phase planned out, but you know what? One of the movies on it, we are not going to release in theaters. We're only going to release on Disney Plus for an extra two bucks. A hundred percent. Oh, dude, that sends chills up my spine. Right. Guys, this phase four movie is actually She-Hulk. You can watch it on Disney Plus for an additional 20 bucks. (laughs) But it it goes back to blurring the lines where you have a TV show of She-Hulk. But then you have a movie on Disney Plus that She-Hulk does appear in. Yep. And then you have to ask the question, okay, this revolutionized... Well, they're already asking this type of stuff. Like, can this film be considered for an Oscar? Because I believe it's a requirement right now that it has a run in a movie theater. Yep, it has That's to. That's why the the uh, the Netflix. Irish guy... Yep, the like Irishman. The Irishman yeah. had to, had to go through like a movie theater, I believe, right? There was something yep. like yeah, it has to go like through that. some kind of um, distribution, right? Which is crazy because it's showing like okay, uh, it's being controlled by an outdated system with, of the Oscars, but the whole yeah. Oscar system is outdated, sort of it's, thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the whole video killed the radio star, man. Yes, the Osc- you know the Academy is terrified. Video of killed the, future, the theater though. star. The future is now, old man, you know, yeah. is, and trust and believe within the next five, 10 years, that rule is going to be thrown right out the window because people aren't going to the movies anymore like that. You know what I mean? I and think they're going to the movies, but it needs to, it's the, it the ones that are making a, yeah. like a real impact are the movie theaters that are like an event connected to it right. to where they're trying to go back to um, having things at the movie theaters where this is your like instead of going, oh, I'm going to the movie see- movies, and then I'm going to do some c- grocery shopping. It's like the the movie is going to be that is my highlight of the day. Yeah. At, at, at that my evening time, I'm going to take a date or some friends, and we're going to go to the movie theater. We're going to listen to, we're going to watch like a a clip of the director that's exclusive to the movie theater talk about the film or something like that. If we show up early enough. And we're going to have beer. We're going to have pizza. Yeah. I think pizza, it's and there's going to be an arcade. Pizza and pretzels and ice cream. Yeah. Now, I just think there's two different kinds of films that yeah. that need to be on the th- on the big screen. In so that like Martin Scorsese, by the way. Yeah, we can talk about that more. I like <laughs> like Star Wars. You want to see on a giant IMAX, right? You want the yeah. you want the experience. But Fifty First Dates with Adam Sandler. No, I can watch that at home. You know what I mean? There's different levels to it. Like, I would love to see like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade on a giant screen, but do I necessarily need to see you know She Hulk or or Moon Knight on the big screen? Yeah, not really. I could watch that (laughs) on a weekend. You know, you know, no, no, no no shade to to Jennifer Walters or or Mark Spector, but um, who are the aliases for either of those characters? I'm a nerd. Um, I just think that it would be smart to kind of start blurring that line and the faster the Academy can kind of get with the times, the better it's just, age. it's showing its age pretty bad. It's okay. Boomering it up. <laughs> Don't be that person. <laughs> Sorry. Had to, had to, uh, did you watch this Scooby-Doo trailer for the new CG Scooby-Doo movie? Uh, it, no, it makes I me feel not. so old, man. Ain't it, makes me feel, that. it makes me feel so old. I love Scooby-Doo. And it's like, this is not, it's one of those movies where you watch the trailer, like, this is not for me, man. (laughs) Like, I understand what's going on and I respect it and it's cool looking and I get it. 
but this is I'm not the demographic dude <laughs> like this is not I, I hate see I, I would rather see it hand drawn and beautifully done but that's just not where we are anymore you know and it just kind of breaks my heart a little bit dude like <laughs> it sucks dude the future is now oh man. man yeah and it's just like I, kids are gonna eat this up and it's like reminds me remember watching Scooby-Doo as a kid and, uh, and the theme song would come on and it's, it's awesome you watch it on Boomerang or Cartoon Network or however you used to watch it back in the day. Yeah. Oh, man, it makes me feel just out of control, aged. I, just, I, I was the penitent man who, who didn't choose wisely, and I just de-aged in my chair, man, or aged in my chair. <sighs> Speaking of things that are aged, um, John Heater is going to be starring in a new Tremors movie. I love Tremors, dude. Nice. I think it's, it's going to be a sci-fi channel exclusive or something, but Napoleon <laughs> Dynamite himself is coming back to theaters. That... As long as they ha- bring the, the other guy, the... I can't remember. Burt Ward? Name. Yeah. Burt... The, no, 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 he, no, no. He's the, the only guy that's been in all the Tremors movies. Yeah, he looks like Alex Trebek. What's that guy's yeah, name? Yeah, and he's off of a TV show, too. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> Burt Ward. No, not Burt Ward. <laughs> Uh, it's, I know you're talking about. He has a giant mustache. Yeah, uh, Michael Gross. Michael Gross. Thank you. Thank, the, thank you. In the t- in the show that he was in was a sitcom. It was a sitcom. Family and, Ties. Okay. And sitcom stands for situational comedy. And situational comedy is Kevin Bacon's life. And we're back. Damn. <laughs> damn. damn. Um. Uh, so yeah, I love Trimmers. I love, I love Trimmers whole... Island Fury, by the way. The name. Yeah, all the Trimmers are stupid and awesome. The first Trimmers is almost a perfect film. If you've never seen the original Trimmers with Reba McIntyre and Kevin Bacon and Burt Ward and Michael Gross and the, the little girl from Jurassic Park's in that. And Jamie it's... Kennedy also entered the series or later, later on. Later, it's super awkward. But yeah, watch all the <laughs> Trimmers with the Graboids. You, you're going to regret not giving them a name. Before there was Sharknado. Before there was, there was Sharknado, there tremors. was Tremors. That's a trailer. Print yeah. that. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the updated Sonic the Hedgehog trailer. Have you seen this? The redesign, Doug? Oh, man. Have you seen the redesign? They just don't know. What, um, I Have got no words about it. It's fascinating to me how social media has totally changed the trajectory of this movie's future, dude. It's kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, social media molded this film in a different direction. It made it change. It made it course correct. And that's dangerous because it's going to get to a point where they just stop listening to us. <laughs> you know? They just stop listening to us and, and stop caring. Now, doesn't Sonic look much better? Yeah. 100%. Okay. He looks great. Sonic looks great, dude. Looks like he's been hitting the, hit the weights a few. Yeah. He looks like Sonic, man. There's this, there's a part of the trailer where Sonic is reading Flash comics, which is very awesome and funny, and he's like reading them in ultra speed, and it's it brings a little tear to my eye. Like that's awesome. That's a very cute scene. But okay, that's see, I'm just saying it. It's <laughs> comic books and video games, man. Play, sitting on sitting on my living room floor playing Sonic the Hedgehog, Green mm-hmm. Hill Zone, Stage One, dude. It's epic, dude. The Sega Master System, dog. Uh. And it did a really good job on him. He looks amazing. But it sets a bad precedent, man. <laughs> you know, it sets a bad precedent to where the movie's not even done yet. It's the first trailer. Everyone screams because that's what the internet does. The internet is a complaint machine. It will. It's going to rage and it's going to want to petition. And it's going to do GoFundMes to, te- to destroy the movie. Right. That's, just, that's just fandom of how it's become. What fandom has become. Maybe it's always been this way. But it's it's disturbing that the studios are listening more than not at all and not following their vision and letting fans dictate the direction of a film's artistic license. Now, that being said, what is to be learned from this truly is just make the thing look like the thing. Right. Right. Make the character look like the character. I don't care how stupid it looks. Just make it look like what people want it to look like. You know? Artistic license be damned. Just make Batman look like Batman. And people will be like, yup, that's Batman. Money. Don't make him some weird, like, offshoot design that your creative team thought up or something. You know? Just 
make Spider-Man look exactly like Spider-Man and people will flock to it. <laughs> and that's what they just, in, in the nineties were really bad with that. Like with mm-hmm. superhero movies, their, the character designs are so out of control. Uh, look at the green goblin in the first Spider-Man movie. No, Looked, I will not. Don't look at it. It, it was weird. <laughs> and it, it's something you grow to love over time. But when it first came out, I was like, that's a funky looking green goblin, dude. Where's his little patch? Where's Hashtag, little... that ain't my green goblin, y'all. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Don't get me started on that. But, I mean, char- <laughs> having having liberty with the character design is one thing. But there's certain icon iconography that's super important with established pop culture cl- characters and pop culture references when you squint it has to look like wolverine right like it's yeah like, you know when you squint it has to look like sonic and when you and when you kind of disturb that silhouette it just it, it's it breaks another kind of uncanny valley you know <laughs> it's it's <sighs> like let's can you imagine the alien without that elongated head the xenomorph without the elongated head or our bat just take away superman's cape why not you know, it's just, it's weird. Like, no, just make it look like the thing. But the trailer looks good. It's pro- a lot of people are very happy with it. The internet seems happy with it. Um, and we'll kind of play from there. I hope Jim Carrey gets his taste buds back. What one thing I do like, and I and we can close on this is I like that comedians, old school comedians that have just decided not to be funny for decades, are starting to come back. Name one comedian. Eddie Murphy and Dolomite. Okay. Dolomite is my name was awesome. <laughs> I watched that on Netflix. And Eddie Murphy, if he chooses to, is back. He's funny. He re- he really he's, feels like he's really trying in that movie. Yeah. And it's played. hilarious because it's Dolomite. Yeah. Jim Carrey is trying to come back, dude. You know, it, it's just, it feels good. It feels good, man. To... Where is Jim Carrey in this again? He's Dr. Robotnik. He's oh, Eggman. yeah. Yeah. He's but Eggman, I don't know man. if this is a comeback. More like... It's he him. needs money. <laughs> it's probably a little bit of both. He's been doing, yeah. and the thing is, he's been on the periphery. Like he's been doing a lot of indie films. Yeah, he needs the films. work. So that's what I'm thinking. He just needs he needs a he needs Ace Ventura. You know what I mean? He needs a hit, which would be nice. You know, because we all Jim Carrey's lived a crazy life. If you've ever really like read his biography, man, that guy's been through it. He, he almost reminds me of Robin Williams. Rest in peace. Uh, but I just hope Jim Carrey's in a good place to do comedy again and. I think he would be nice. It would be nice to see him in other things and him stretching his legs, you know. Especially Eddie Murphy. I hope Coming to America 2 is funny. I really hope that. And also, um, Wesley Snipes is in Dolomite 2. He kind of steals the movie. But anywho, what are you looking forward to, man? I'm looking forward to a weekend of cleaning my car and maybe playing some old school games i'm still th- i'm thinking about maybe testing out twitch again this weekend do some trash tv i want to watch yeah uh and you know D this uh is that sunday. this weekend yeah oh man i thought it was next sunday okay yeah, yeah, yeah i'm excited for that uh i'm looking forward to D D. apparently i, I gotta fine-tune my character a little bit looking forward for- to this week being over like Mike G when he's not wearing his MLTN cape and cowl. Uh it's just been a rough work week. Um there's a lot of changes. Changes. Uh yeah. And just trying to balance through that. Looking forward to more uh Disney Plus. I want to dig, dive deeper into that. Definitely looking for more looking forward to more Outer Wild Outer Worlds and playing through this bad guy corporate shill uh playthrough. So very excited for that. 100%. Uh, any last thoughts before we close this bad boy out? Check me out on Trash Monk at Trash Monk the Third, Trash Monk III on all your favorite social media apps. Yeah, look them up on social meds, Doug. And if you like this content and want to support us monetarily, please visit our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash MLTN, where you can find our, I would say, big, giant, destructive backlog with all of our episodes from the very first episode where it's just me talking into the ether to this episode today. Uh, if you want to support us non-monetarily, you can always listen to us and like our content on any podcast outlet, distribution outlet that you're listening to. If you're on Apple Podcasts, I want to say thank you. 
And please leave us a review. We need more reviews. I want to know how we're doing, good or bad. Just let us know if this podcast is enjoyable to you or if you learned something new. Like watch Carnosaur. I will always push Carnosaur. And if you wanted to comment, leave us a comment on on our uh, social media as well. That is at M Nerdiverse. That's our Twitter. We're on Facebook as well. Facebook forward slash uh, Masters Nerdiverse Cast, I believe. And uh, find our content there as well. I've of course been your host, Mike G. And I've been your host, Trash Monk the Third. And we will always ask you to take that one step beyond.